Welcome to part 3 of my variant series, where I'm covering science themed variants of canon Pokemon, which I can't really use anymore in my science themed independent project. I've had these designs for a long while before I decided to go full indie. There's a high chance that I'll revisit some of these concepts, but I didn't have the time to remake all of them into completely unique designs. But today I'll be going over direct regional variants that I made. To clarify, regional variants is a concept used in Pokemon since the 7th generation, where older lines are referenced in a new design, but they have a different flavor added to them. In our world, we could call this divergent evolution. These guys shared an ancestor, but they parted ways and grew up differently. Heck, one of them could remain to still look like the ancestor while the other one branches off. That's still called divergent because they're going away from each other. I think the only regional that doesn't really sound like divergent evolution are maybe the Galarian legendary birds. But this was before convergent lines were introduced, like Wug vs. Doug trio. And also, convergent Pokemon isn't even an official term, it just describes those kind of mons a bit better. Here's the issue. This is the third video I'm talking about convergent evolution, but there is a difference between convergent evolution in our world and convergent Pokemon. I'd say that convergent Pokemon so far is a small subset of convergent evolution we see in our world. One of the most popular convergent examples is between a shark and a dolphin. I can imagine them both being water type, but many fans would say, Oh, the convergent Pokemon can't be both the same type, and probably comment of how they have to be opposite types and... Honestly, I kind of disagree. We've only seen two lines so far. I wouldn't be surprised that if in the future that they break this typing rule. Just like how regional variants don't seem to be dependent on sharing a type or not. But why am I bringing this up? That's because I'm pretty sure my first design here is still a regional. The slowest line is about cell division. Mitosis. You get a cell, splits into two, those split into two each, and it multiplies and multiplies. Now there are multiple interpretations of what Reuniclus could be. Is it a single cell organism like the sailor eye? Could be. Or is it a fetus as a result of a stem cell multiplying over and over? As it sounds like the middle stage duosion is like two cells, maybe Solosis was one cell, Reuniclus is a bunch. There's multiple answers I'm sure. But I took this embryo concept and made a plant variant of the Solosis line. One of the first lessons in microbiology you learn about is how the plant cell is different from the animal cell. So I gave Solosis a sturdy cell wall with a vacuole to sit on. Vacuole being a big organelle that stores water. So why did I call this a regional variant? Honestly, because it was before convergence were ever a thing. I had this since like 2020. But would I call this a convergent Pokemon? I don't think so. Chew on that thought as I show off Duosion. Weird funky shape, right? It's kind of making stuff a stem, and that's because this line is based off of plant embryonic development. How plant babies are made. In other words, seeds. Now it's not the same as human embryonic development, but the very early stages can have some parallels. Alright, so we're jumping from an animal cell to a plant one. That must be two very different species coming together, right? Why isn't it convergent? Well, I've been thinking. I think it's a trick question in this instance. From the two convergent Pokemon lines we've seen, their main goal is to take them on, give it a completely new species, and whoa, turns out that this unrelated species figured out to do something similar. Very much like how the bird and the bat figured out how to fly. But the spirit of convergent evolution from our world is that what defines species being unrelated is if there was an ancestor that shared the trait or not. If birds and bats both had the same ancestor that also flew, they wouldn't be unrelated enough when we're talking about flight. But they don't share an ancestor that flies, and they kind of figured it out themselves, independently. So we could call it convergent. So far? Neither Lugtrio nor Toad School actually breaks this core tenet of Convergent Evolution. That's why I'm calling Convergent Pokemon a subset of Convergent Evolution as a whole so far. So back to the Solosis line. Despite being an animal versus a plant, 
which are usually very genetically different, who are from completely different kingdoms. Has there been an ancestor that goes under mitosis like they both do now? If I say no to this question, this would make this a convergent mod. But in this case, there most likely was an ancestor that went through mitosis before splitting off between the kingdoms. This ancestor is called the last eukaryotic common ancestor. Eukaryotes encapsulate animals, plants, fungi, other unicellular fellas, basically anyone that's not bacteria or archaea. I hope you could understand what convergent evolution means. It's not about the typing or jumping from an animal to a plant, but about whether they had a common ancestor that shared the trait or not. Convergent variants in Pokemon do seem to just focus on wild separations, but they haven't broken our definition of convergent evolution with the lack of an ancestor stuff. Who knows, maybe convergent Pokemon in the future would look wildly different. Again, we've only seen two lines so far. No one should be completely sure what makes the rules of a convergent Pokemon with just two lines so far. Alright, so plants and animals most likely did not independently figure out mitosis and divergently evolved away from each other. That's why I called the Solosis a regional. But the last stage of this plant Solosis is going to be a bean. Given the history of plant ferns versus animal sponges, plant beans and animal fetuses were probably formed independently. So upon reviewing the script, I decided to give this last stage a different name instead of calling it a straight up regional. Reunicot. Seeds and beans have big food storages called cotyledons, which are special leaves that provide nutrition for the embryo to grow up from the ground. Reunicot here is also kind of shaped like a Minecraft creeper. Oh man. Honestly, I don't know if I'll be redesigning that line for my project, as the plant cell reference really works well with the complementary animal cell line, but this next concept is something I wanted to include one day. Fractals are geometric recursions, a shape that has similar features again and again as you zoom in. So it took a look at the coach snowflake. Making a coach snowflake is simple. Take a side, take the middle third, and add an equilateral triangle as big as that third. And then you repeat. If you start with an equilateral triangle, you can get this pretty snowflake. If you do this an infinite number of times, no matter how much you zoom in, it will still resemble the previous iteration, thus making it a fractal. Now, drawing this would be a nightmare, so I just did the second iteration in my cryogonal regional. My version has them being an ice psychic type. As mentioned earlier, I do want a fractal mon somewhere in my project. It most likely would be a coach snowflake, as having more ice types can't hurt, but we'll have to see. Alright, so this next design was recommended by Pug Waffles through my Twitch stream last year. They recommended the Tiktaalik, an extinct bony fish that is thought to be a link between fish and land-dwelling vertebrates. When I was notified about this topic, I thought this would be a cool variant for relicanth, which is based off of the coelacanth, an old species of fish that's thought to be extinct, but they were present again. Those kind of species are called Lazarus species, or taxon, depending on how broadly we're defining the group. Tiktaalics aren't Lazarus, they're just extinct by now, but they are old. And while I could have made this a fossil mon, I just wanted to draw a flat geezer fish, which you can see here as a water ground type. Go grandpa, go! This last line I'll be showing off was a concept suggested by Mr. Niffler back in 2022 through my Twitch stream as well. And they recommended a design about carbonated drinks. You see, these YouTube videos and class sessions about oh, let's conduct a radical science experiment and they put Mentos into soda to make the soda spill all over like whoa, whoa. What did you learn from that? What was the purpose of those experiments? Well, those experiments claim to show off carbonation. 
how carbon dioxide has been infused with the liquid part of the soda. And the gases you see in the Mentos explosion is CO2 being released all at once. My initial synesthy design was a chemical flask because that's how carbonation was achieved back in the- Stop it! It's not a bong! Ah! So I used the ingenious design of the aluminum beverage can for my synesthy. Honestly, it should have been this from the get-go. I just felt that a soda can alone wouldn't be fitting against my other science-based creatures, but hey, by now I know I can't use regionals like this, so it was nothing to worry about. So wait, why does Mentos make soda explode? Mentos has a lot of tiny holes and dimples that's hard to see, but they can serve as nucleation sites, which are places for a specific chemical to latch onto and encourage more of its kind to grow on it. In this case, we're talking about CO2 gas growing into a bubble, which would become large enough to escape the liquid. Adding something like Mentos, which has a lot of nucleation sites, makes all of that happen immediately, violently disturbing the liquid and landing the soda all over the place, making a very sticky mess. Anyways, get an old glass bottle and you'll get a fizzy poltergeist. They be spilling and making a mess all over themselves. Thank you for watching part 3 out of my 4 videos on science-themed variants of canon Pokemon. I did later pivot into trying to make a wholly independent project, so I wouldn't be using any of these designs directly in my project, but I might revisit some of these concepts in the future, so let me know which ones you would want to see redone as completely original designs. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for supporting me directly, especially in these times. And I implore everyone to stick around for my next video, where I'll go over a certain event that I hosted back in 2022 and finish off this variant series. So I'll see you then.